Hello students, welcome to Basic Science. For humans, any step closer to figuring out the origin of the universe means one step closer towards understanding ourselves better. Human beings possess an intrinsic need to explore the world. Through exploration, we have discovered new continents, found cures to diseases, advanced in technology, communication, and much more. Studying the origins of the universe and exploring it helps us build our civilization. Many of us may be wondering, how investing millions of dollars every year on studying the origins of the universe would possibly benefit us, right? Well, today in this video, we're going to discuss the significance of these studies and their contribution to the human race. Investing millions of dollars every year in understanding the universe, its origin and existence is like insurance to our future. Every step towards understanding it is as good as the next stage of human development and advancement. Today, we have managed to come so far mainly due to advancement in astronomy in exploring the origin of the universe. Imagine if we find out that every planet, after a certain time, just dies or explodes. That is essential to understand the behavior of our planet. So the next time you hear of any further development in the study of astronomy or the origin of the universe, consider it to be an advancement rather than taking it to be a study that is just a waste of time and money spent on understanding the past that has no significance to the future. Let's take Big Bang Theory as an example. The Big Bang Theory is the leading explanation about how the universe began. At its simplest, it says the universe as we know it started with a small singularity, then inflated over the next 13.8 billion years to the cosmos that we know today. Related to the Big Bang Theory, we can also discuss here the origin of the elements, particularly the formation of some light elements like helium and hydrogen, together with the formation of our heavy atoms, like boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, which can be found in our periodic table of elements. The origin of the Big Bang Theory can be credited to Edwin Hubble. Hubble made the observation that the universe is continuously expanding. He discovered that the galaxy's velocity is proportional to its distance. Galaxies that are twice as far as from us move twice as fast. Another consequence is that the universe is expanding in every direction. This observation means that it has taken every galaxy the same amount of time to move from a common starting position to its current position. Just as the Big Bang provided for the foundation of the universe, Hubble's observation provided for the foundation of the Big Bang Theory. Since the Big Bang, the universe has been continuously expanding and thus there has been more and more distance between clusters of galaxies. This phenomenon of galaxies moving farther away from each other is known as the red shift. As light from distant galaxies approach Earth, there is an increase of space between Earth and the galaxy, which leads to the wavelength being stretched. The year 1929, when this American astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered that galaxies move away from each other, or galaxies move away from the Earth, which is actually proportional to their red shifts. When we call it red shift, this is when a light source moves away from its observer, just like when you're holding a flashlight and throw it far from your distance. The light's apparent wavelength is stretched by the Doppler effect towards the red part of the spectrum. Hubble said that if galaxies are moving away from us, then at some time in the past, they must have been clustered close together. For the Doppler effect, just try to imagine this one. There is an eye at the right side, which is associated to the Earth, and we also have the dot moving towards the eye or towards the Earth. That dot is what we call as the galaxy. If we're going to observe that, the wavelengths or the number of wavelengths are actually increasing. At the same time, the size of the wavelength is actually decreasing. Compare that to this example. At the left side, we can see there an eye or the earth, and we also have the dot which is moving away from the eye or from the earth. And with this, we can also observe here that the number of waves are actually decreasing. At the same time, the size of the wavelengths are increasing. This is exactly the reason why Hubble concluded 
that the galaxies were moving away from the Earth. Because as time goes by, he is receiving an increasing size of the wavelengths, at the same time, decreasing numbers of the waves. Hubble's discovery was the first observational support for George Lemaitre's Big Bang Theory of the Universe, which was proposed in the year 1927. Lemaitre proposed that the universe expanded explosively from an extremely dense and hot state and continues to expand today. Subsequent calculations have dated this Big Bang up to approximately 13.7 billion years ago. In the year 1998, two teams of astronomers from Berkeley, California observed that supernovae or exploding stars were moving away from Earth at an accelerating rate. This earned them the Nobel Prize in Physics the year 2011. They also had assumed that matter in the universe would slow its rate of expansion due to what we call the gravity, because this gravity would eventually cause the universe to fall back on its center. Before the Big Bang incident, the universe was actually extremely hot and dense, at the same time it is single. But after the Big Bang, the pieces from it produced from that incident are moving away from each other, which is the reason why they are becoming cool. As the universe cooled, conditions became just right to give rise to the building blocks of matter, which are what we call the quarks and electrons. A few millions of a second later, after the quarks and electrons were produced, these quarks aggregated to produce protons, which are positive charges, and neutrons, which are neutral charges. Within minutes, these protons and neutrons combined into nuclei or nuclei, and as the universe continued to expand and cool, things began to happen more slowly. But take note, we still don't have atoms here, because as you can see, we have the nuclei, which is made up of protons and neutrons, that is separated from electrons because this time, electrons were not yet orbiting the nuclei. In order to produce the first atom, it must have the three subatomic particles. We have the electron for negative charge, proton for the positive charge, and neutron for the negative charge. It took 380,000 years for electrons to be trapped in orbits around the nuclei, forming the first atoms. These were mainly atoms of helium and hydrogen, which are still by far the most abundant elements in the universe. Present observations suggest that the first stars formed from clouds are around 150 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. For the record, helium and hydrogen are actually light elements or light atoms. Heavy atoms such as carbon, oxygen, and iron have since been continuously produced in the hearts of the stars and catapulted throughout the universe in spectacular stellar explosions called supernovae. Again, in order to produce our atom or elements, we must have these three subatomic particles, which are proton for positive charge, neutron for the neutral charge, and electron for the negative charge. To review the things that happened after the Big Bang incident, we have this what we call quarks and electrons. The quarks aggregated to form the protons and the neutrons, and after how many minutes, these protons and neutrons combine together to form the nuclei. And for 380,000 years, that's the time that the electrons were trapped in orbit around that nuclei. With that, the first atoms of helium and hydrogen were created. To end this, what are other theories you know about the origin of the Earth? Let me know at the comment section.